Good evening, members of the board, Chairman Belford, Superintendent Mullins. I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you this evening. And I would like to introduce um, Grace Swedek Norton. She is our work-based learning specialist, and as Dr. Sullivan mentioned, she is coming to us from Career Source Brevard. But prior to that, she was with Eastern Florida State College working in career and technical education. So her experiences have made her just the perfect fit for us in CTE to help lead our students into um, these work-based learning experiences. So we are very grateful to have her here. So you have a wonderful packet, wealth of information sitting in front of you there. You have some of our recent collateral um, that will help you better speak to the um, data that supports career and technical education in our district, as well as some of the recent news stories where our students have been featured in, um, in the news, as well as some uh, documents regarding Perkins legislation and the Executive Order 1931, which we'll speak on in just a moment. Okay, so why career and technical education? I know most of the board members here, you are very familiar with CTE, but for those listening that are not, career and technical education is an opportunity to prepare students for both college and career opportunities when they graduate. It is a wonderful marriage of both academic success and technical skills. So students have a hands-on approach to learning that they often don't get in their core academic classes. It provides opportunities for all students where I've seen so many successes with students in their CTE classes that they might not get in traditional academic courses. You really see a chance for students to excel. And I just, I love to see that. Um, my personal experience and what drove me into CTE, I spent a lot of time floundering, trying to figure out my direction. I went to more of a liberal arts high school, didn't have some of that hands-on experience. And our students now get to try some different things and see what is it that I really like to do? What can I see myself earning a living doing? CTE is that perfect opportunity for those kids. And career and technical education is flexible. It's ever changing. It's adapting. And it's preparing students for high skill, high wage, and high demand careers. It's not your parents' VOTEC. It's not the old dirty um, manufacturing facility that you think of 50 years ago, um, most of these manufacturing facilities, you could probably eat off the floor. It's that clean. Um, we're not going to try that, but you know, it, it's possible. Um, so some students may graduate from a CTE program of study and could go directly um, into the workforce. Or they may want to go to college. It's just depending on what the student's aspirations may look like. So there are some scholarship opportunities for students through Bright Futures. There's the Florida Gold Seal Vocational Scholars Award, as well as the Florida Gold Seal CAPE Scholars Award. I'm not gonna go through all the details here, but many of our students wanna go to college. That is the route that they wanna take, and we want to um, express those opportunities to them. It's just depending, as I mentioned, as to what their career goals are. So, career and technical education is governed at the federal level by Perkins legislation, and we waited for a very long time in CTE for Perkins legislation to be reauthorized. In fact, it wasn't reauthorized until 2018 from back in 2006. There was a lot of old language in there that was, that was governing us. So we were very excited when it finally came through that it placed more of an emphasis on special population groups as well as work-based learning. And it also put more of a focus on a comprehensive local needs assessment. And what that is, is it's involving all of the different stakeholder groups to take a really hard look at our CTE programs to ensure that we are providing the most relevant and rigorous opportunities for our students that are meeting the needs of all students. And when that new legislation came out, it shifted the focus a little bit of what we were doing in CTE. Oops. Clicked on a button. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, so speaking of that comprehensive local needs assessment, as we start looking at our program offerings in Brevard Public Schools, it's critical that we involve these different stakeholder groups to provide the most relevant options for our students. So when we start looking at new programs or start looking at our existing programs to ensure we have the right offerings, we have to take a look at a lot of different things. First of all, is it meeting the needs of our labor market? And every different area within the state and within the nation 
has different needs. We would expect that. And we do have some very unique here, very unique needs here in Brevard County. We are heavily driven by our manufacturing community. We have over 600 manufacturers in Brevard County. IT is a priority sector. Healthcare, um, aviation, aerospace, these are high needs in our local community. And so that is defined, that's defined by career source, first of all. So we have to be thinking, how can we prepare our students to stay here? We want to feed into our local community and keep our kids here with the right skill set that we need. So when we're looking at programs, we look at regional and state demand list, we look at targeted occupations, and try to find the right programs to put into place. We also don't want to just offer um, individual courses. We want to put together a program of study that leads them from the middle grades all the way through post-secondary. Mm -hmm. So if a student wants to begin exploratory classes that can lead them through graduation, they can go directly to work, or they can go into a post-secondary program, maybe a certificate program or apprenticeship, or they can go into an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. But they, the idea is that they have a pathway that they can go into whatever, um, whatever level of education they want to to get to their next step. We also want them to have a work-based learning experience where they go to work and they get a feel for what it is they're going to do when they graduate. Um, so many students step into the workforce and they don't like it. They've studied it for so long and they have, say, this isn't what I expected. Um, what a great opportunity we have as educators to let them try it before they actually get out. They've spent so much time and money and energy into something they don't even enjoy. So it's, it's a unique opportunity we have with CTE to help them get plugged in. Career Tech Student Organizations is another piece where they can compete and really push themselves. So, and industry certification is vital as well. So many um, of our programs provide them a certificate that tells business and industry partners that they have a level of knowledge and expertise that they can come right to work and um, know what they're doing. We've had business partners that have said, I had no idea. I didn't even have to tell the student what to do. <laughs> We put some kids to work over here at Brevard County Government, and they have been singing their praises. They just said, these kids just started on projects, and they just sat down and started working with CAD. <laughs> I, we didn't have to train them on that. They just got to work. And that's um, a testament to the education that they're getting in the CTE courses. All right, so Career and Professional Education Act is a Florida legislation. I'm not going to go into all the details with this. But it is specific to Florida. So when I moved out of South Carolina, this was very exciting for me because it is a collaborative effort between workforce and education to prepare quality students and quality graduates from our CTE programs. It also provides some bonus funding for our, for our programs that help keep our equipment and facilities um, focused and help keep them um, help keep the appropriate um, equipment needed in, in the program and meet workforce needs. Some other legislation and initiatives that govern CTE is the Executive Order 1931. This came down from our governor in 2019 that charts a course for Florida to become number one in the nation in workforce by 2030 and be sure that our students are prepared for jobs of the future. So this is what's guiding us in career and technical education to keep trying to put new programs, new industry certifications, and keep challenging our students with rigor and new, um, new offerings. Um, also, House Bill 7071, which was passed in 2019, establishes an annual review of our CTE program. So we're constantly looking to improve. We don't want to be settled with what we've always done in the past. We want to keep pushing our kids. A few statistics for you. Now, this document that I shared with you, very colorful one in the front there, has lots of statistics that you can share. So put these in your pocket as you're walking around and talking with, talking with your friends. Um, we have 42 high school CTE programs right now. These are unique programs throughout the district. We have 26 middle school course offerings right now. Um, 39 memorandums of understanding in place for advanced standing at post-secondary institutions. That means that just by being a part of our CTE programs, students have credit in escrow when they go to college. How cool is that? Just by, just by being a part and earning, earning a good grade, they can, they can go to college and they have some, some points in, in their pocket. And in 
career and technical education, we have a 95.1% graduation rate for CTE concentrators in 1819. What that means is that if a student took three courses in a single CTE program of study, they are graduating at a 95.1% graduation rate. That's huge. That means if we can find what it is that sparks somebody's interest, we can get them across the stage because they found something that provides the why. That's what we need to find for every one of our students here, a reason to help them get through to that finished product. But in CTE, we're not just worried about the graduation. We want to find out what's their next step. We want to help them figure out what that, what that next piece is going to be for them. Here's some highlights. Y'all, I had a very difficult time trying to narrow down these next few slides, but I'm going to try. I had a really difficult time. I kept getting edited. Okay, I'm going to try to run through these really quick. 48 students in the Teaching Academy at Bayside. In other words, potential teachers for Brevard Public Schools have a new radio station that was just put into place at Vieira. They are broadcasting Brevard into the world. They're currently, um, currently playing a demo program right now. Um, we have 10 graduates that are signing on immediately after graduation for full-time employment with L3 Harris. Um, 15 rising seniors are going into Brevard Public Schools internships. Four seniors were in Brevard County government internships. Eight graduates are getting full-ride firefighting scholarships. Um, 11 graduates are going into welding apprenticeships. One student, one student named Carson from Palm Bay earned 19 industry certifications. One. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I mean, this, this kid, engineering, design, Microsoft Office, and IT certifications, this kid's going to rule the world. <laughs> He's going to rule the world. I'm so proud of him. We had seven students in high school that earned the MSSC Certified Production Technician Certification. That's what our advanced manufacturing adults are going immediately to work with right now. Highly marketable. Um, and we had a perfect evaluation on our Perkins audit, which we'd expect it, but always, always amazing. Always amazing to talk about, right? Okay. Um, I think I skipped over. Nope. Okay. Our students are also working in Na with NASA HUNCH. HUNCH stands for High School Students United with NASA to Create Hardware. We've been sending items to the NASA, to the International Space Station. In fact, if you look here, these students from O'Galley are working on wire wraps. Um, they're creating wire wraps, and the astronaut on the right is pictured with the wire wraps in space. Pretty cool, huh? So um, this is happening in our high school programs here in Brevard Public Schools. I can't let, did you all hear that? Are you, did you fall asleep? <laughs> our high school kids are making stuff that goes to the International Space Station. Yeah. That is just, it's amazing. Nowhere, I, nowhere else. Sorry. I had to get excited. Put that on a marketing page. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mullins. Making stuff. All right. In terms of industry certifications, we hit a little hiccup with COVID. But what I want you to see is that it didn't knock us down. It didn't. COVID did not knock us down. Our students have still persevered. They have been earning digital tools, which are showcasing their knowledge in cybersecurity, in Microsoft Office, um, in digital literacy. And they've been earning industry certifications as well. We are providing additional access. Our pass rates were a little bit, were a little bit low last year, but we're, we're coming at it full force this year. Um, even in spite of this pandemic, we're rocking and rolling. So I'm really proud of our students with everything that we've had going on. Here's a couple of highlights. Um, our first student earned CompTIA Security Plus. Um, Another one of our students earned Python certification, which if you're in the IT world, that's some good money involved in those certifications. Um, one of our middle school students earned a gaming essentials digital tool. We added ServeSafe certifications into our, a few of our serve, um, excuse me, a few of our food science programs. And just last week, nine of our students earned the 911 certification from Titusville High School, brand new program. So they can go directly to work, earning over $16 an hour. First year program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here are a few of our facilities highlights, some pictures in our tech ed labs and our middle school culinary labs and our exercise science lab at Palm Bay. 
Our students are, earn, are learning in um, state-of-the-art facilities. I'm going to have to be honest, I slid another highlight in first thing this morning. I had to. I had to. We had, um, I know, I had to. We had um, our automotive programs went to the Universal Technical Institute this weekend and took five of the, five of the top ten awards. So I had to highlight that, <laughs> including the first place at O'Galley. I was really proud of them. Um, you can see Edgewood Junior Senior had a first place in a region event for a video. Mel Melbourne High had second place in an applied cybersecurity competition. That's a first year program. Um, Palm Bay just did an amazing job. So many awards in the Technology Student Association competition. Space Coast Principles of Teaching, another teaching program there. Um, had three first place awards and Vieira High School. This is another hot off the press, won second place in a national social innovation competition, um, entrepreneurial type competition. So we're just really proud of what they're doing. And did I mention this was a COVID year? <laughs> okay. So uh, this priorities for the upcoming year, one of them is work-based learning. Um, in the strategic plan, we have a specific area that's dedicated to us in adult ed. We've, work in, we've been working really collaboratively with adult ed. Um, we are partners in so much of what we do. We share a lot of business partners as well. Um, and so we are working to establish those business partnerships in the best interest of our students. And um, so Grace has been working really hard to help develop systems uh, to help scale what we're doing. In fact, right before we came in, we had 155 students that have expressed an interest in internships beginning in August. So we've got some, we've got some ground to cover, um, but they're interested. They want to get out and um, make those connections. So we're going to make it happen for them. Um, we're also going to be looking really strongly at our middle schools and looking at the programs to see what we can do to enhance those, um, continuing to upgrade and improve on our facilities. And we're going to be planning for a firefighting program which we do not have in that career cluster. So in terms of work-based learning, we're going to be moving through, um, students go through a different continuum. They start by just learning a little bit about work through field trips, and then they go into job shadowing, and then they might do a school-based enterprise. And we are moving them into this career training mold. Even through our pre-apprenticeship, which we established last year, we are going to be moving them through an on-the-job training component as well. So we're going to be helping them get that high level um, hands on application piece so that they can go to work or um, post secondary. And then as we move um, into other areas of focus, we're actually going to be working into elementary a little bit in the upcoming year, which is really exciting. Some of our elementary schools are going to be adding a digital tool. Um, which is very exciting. So they're going to be doing some digital literacy. And so we're very excited to do that. Madison is going to be specializing a little bit in their Innovate Academy. They're going to be adding a computer science pathway and a skilled trades pathway at their school. We're going to be reopening Stone's technology education program and adding a high school credit IT, information technology course, into Madison. And we're going to be adding Titusville um, Lockheed Martin cybersecurity program in the next year. And as we continue to move, we're going to continue to be looking at increasing the middle school program offerings, look, uh, building up our facilities, putting firefighting into place, and adding a central area construction related program. Okay. Challenges to overcome. And board, I really need your assistance as we move forward with this. Expanding our business partner paid internship sites. You heard the number of students that we have interested. It's huge. Um, we have some very talented, motivated kids that want to get to work and want to try this out and see what they can see what they can do. Let them show our community what they're capable of. So we really need your help finding finding spots for these kids. Um, please send them. Please send them my way if you know people that might be willing to talk um, to talk with me. Um, we're also anticipating some major changes in the CAPE funding process that are coming down from the state. There's been a lot of conversation there. Um, also, retaining and attracting qualified CTE teachers always a challenge. Uh, 
um, we're going to continue looking and building up and training. We have some amazing teachers right now. There's always a need for, um, for further development and some more. And also staying current on equipment and technology needs. In an ever-changing um, ever CTE world, it's, it's a battle to try to stay on top of what's current in our, in our community.